Organic Dope, UFC 148, Silva vs. Sonnen 2. Bill Schumer, Robert Holloman, Dan Littlefield. John Alessio, 34 and 15, 0 and 3 in the UFC versus Shane Roller, 10 and 6, 1 and 3 in the UFC. Uh, Alessio has tons of experience, some huge losses. Uh, trains out of Extreme Couture. Roller is a three-time All-American Division One wrestler. Uh, both of them have unimpressive stats in the UFC. Uh, Rob? John, John Alessio, you said he comes out of Randy Couture's camp, so he's got to be a good wrestler. Shane Roller's strength is wrestling, so I know at Couture they work on a, rest, a lot of wrestling. And Alessio's got that experience. I think he's going to pull out. Yeah, John Alessio's been around a long time. His first fight in the UFC was in the year 2000 against Pat Milicic. Wow. Uh, so that's forever Yeah, ago. he's pushing 50 fights. And it's a long time ago. I'm going to take him. I'm going to take Shane Roller. I agree. I think Shane Roller controls his fight to the vision, the decision, uses his wrestling, and uh, you're going to see a pretty boring fight. Yeah. That's what I think. Next. See. Fabricio Camoes, uh, 14 6 and 1, 1 1 and 1 in the UFC against Melvin Gillard, 29 and 10, 11 and 6 in the UFC. Melvin's looked a lot better lately outside of the fact that he's lost the last two. Um, he does look sharper. But he was winning against He did Jim beat Miller. Shane Roller once. Uh, there you go. Uh, he's very athletic, uh, explosive. He's also a Jiu Jitsu blue belt, even though. He seems to uh, not have any of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kamoas, however, is at uh, Damian Maya's, Maya's level of jiu-jitsu. He's a third-degree black belt under uh, Hoyler Gracie. That's pretty nasty. Well, if he has uh, Damian Maya's takedown ability, then it's definitely going to the ground, right? He's a bigger guy. <laughs> he, he's, he's stout. He's not scared to stand up. Um, I, I, think, I, I wonder if the UFC just likes to see Melvin Gillard tap. Because I really feel like, actually, I'm almost guaranteeing if Melvin Gillard does not KO this guy early, he's getting tapped. Yeah, this guy here, he submitted uh, Tommy Hayden. I'm not sure who he is. Uh, and he submitted, uh, no, he got submitted to Kurt by Kurt Pellegrino, but he has a unanimous decision against uh, Efrain Escudero, and he had a draw against That's not saying a lot Kyle right there. Uno. Um, right. Efrain, Efrain Escudero. Right. He's. he's He's good, but come on. He's a good fight, but he's still... I'm taking uh, Melvin Gillard. I think that... I, I, I haven't looked at Melvin, Melvin Gillard's record, but I bet you he's never lost three oh, fights in a row. He's 46-11-3. and 11-6 um, and six in the UFC. I bet you he's never lost three in a row, though. And, I don't think so. And he's I'm, lost two in a row right now. I go back to his main fights. I think he's going to win by knockout, like you were saying. He's, beat, he's beat Dennis Seaver, Gleison Tabo, Nate Diaz. He's beat... Uh, Tor, some, to my Torres, I'm not sure. Wayne Lowe's? Joe Stevens, uh, Evan Dunham, Shane Roller, then he lost... Did you just say Melvin Gillard beat Nate Diaz? No, he lost to Nate Diaz. Oh, okay. And then he beat Shane Roller, he lost to Joe Lazan, and he lost to Jim Miller. I'm a big Melvin Gillard fan, but he's looked so just out of whack, and I don't know what his deal is. He's only 29, he's got 46-11 and, th and 3 no Shit, he had uh, and like 30 fights, no though, when he was on the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, yeah he's, he was saying he's he had more than you. He's had a ton of fights, but I don't know. I think he's just, I don't know what his, if he's in a bad place or if he can't concentrate, but he's, I mean. He does, he's getting tapped. He gets tapped out all the he time does rush. lately all of a sudden. And he, you know, Joe Lazan caught him and then submitted him. I don't, so, lose, I don't think he loses three in a row, though. We got Chad Mendez, final card of the prelims, 11-1, and 2-1 and one in the UFC. Against Cody McKenzie. Uh, who's thirteen and two, two and two, the Alaskan fisherman, as I like to call him. Uh, Mendez is a wrestler, of course. His only loss being to Jose Aldo. Uh, Cody McKenzie, I would think, best known for his guillotine. Yeah. He actually had ten straight guillotines. Here's the issue with I'd that. Watch your neck I mean, Chad um, Mendez. right? If uh, if you're Chad Mendez and you're a wrestler. You, you kind of have to almost go to that position where you're in danger of a guillotine. So that's not good, but at the same time, I don't really think it's going to matter. I think, I think he can hold off the guillotine. He knows yeah. it's coming. Any good wrestlers like that know it's coming no matter what. Plus he trains with Team Alpha Male. I mean, he's training with Uriah Faber and Joseph Benavidez. I mean, he's, he's going to be prepared for that guillotine. He's not going to get caught in the guillotine, I don't think. Mc I, I mean, McKenzie doesn't seem too powerful either, ever. 
Yeah, I think Mendez um, takes it. Uh, takes it to the ground, controls it. I think he takes it pretty easily. Honestly, he probably win by TKO. I agree. I kind of feel the same. Kind of almost what we're about to talk about the Damian Maya fight next is that when you're sub- when you when guys know that your submission that's like your thing. In a big, it comes up the guys they train just for you know, especially just when you're, to not have that happen. Especially when the guy goes on like if he had ten submissions, that's different. You know, if he has ten submissions in three guillotines, a couple rear naked chokes, and an arm bar, a triangle, it's different. But when you have ten guillotines, I mean, come on, it's a one trick pony, and it is you, you know not to get near that. Yeah, obviously, ten guys didn't take that advice that I would give to him. But at that point, you don't know he's going for ten guillotines in a row. But now. Eighteen's easy to get to, and he's a wrestler, so it could happen. Yeah, I just some, don't think it sometimes will. Sometimes, you know, the one-trick ponies work out, though. You know, I mean, Ronda Rousey, it's working for her. Um, what's his name? Uh, Paul Harris. Paul Harris. Uh, Paul Harris. Harris. I think I'm pronouncing it wrong, but... Uh, I think that's correct. You know, he's always going for the leg locks. He gets them all the time, you know, except for his last fight, of course. But, but uh you know, sometimes it works. Well, that's for what him. happens though, when you focus on one thing, though. It's a danger for Chan Mendes because he is a wrestler, but um, he might be able to just keep it standing and beat him on the feet, and that's what I think is going to end up getting the TKO. We'll keep keep it together. We'll hit to the main card. We got Dong Hyung Kim, uh, fifteen and one, two and one in the UFC versus Damian Maya, fifteen and four, nine and four in the UFC. Uh, Kim is, of course, a uh, judo black belt, fourth degree. Only losses to Condit. Uh, he also beat Nate Diaz. I would think those are the two toughest fights. Maya is a third-degree black belt in jiu-jitsu, uh, but judo was his first martial art as a kid. So he's not unknown to the judo side of things. Do you think Kim can get the knockout? I don't think it's going to go to the ground at all. Damian Maya has never really shown any kind of takedown ability, in my opinion. I mean, I can't think of anybody that he's taken down. He's gotten submissions, but... It's usually because someone else takes it. Takes Took him down. down. You know, I mean. You think Kim avoids that? I don't think it's going to the ground at all. I mean, every time I see uh, Damian Maya go for a takedown, it's either a really horrible shoot or it's that stuffed. type of trip. You know, some type of trip. I see it more as uh, the judo putting it to the floor. I think they uh, maybe get into the clinch. Kim gets him in a clinch. Maybe throws a hip toss or something. Throws him to the ground, and then doesn't get his arm back. I don't, I don't understand why why we go to the ground with him. I mean, Maya standings looked a lot better too. He's a little more sharper. He's been working on it. It's more technical, but it's he doesn't have any power. I mean, he has power, but obviously he wouldn't be a UFC fighter if he wouldn't didn't have power. But but he doesn't have like knockout power. You know, I mean, he's he's more technical. He kind of reminds me Come on, of like him. no, of, of Damian Maya's Maya. striking. It's more technical than it is devastating. You yeah, know? Yeah. I just don't think. I it's don't think it's a devastating striking at all. Right. I yeah. have Dong Yum Kim in this fight. Uh, Dong Yum Kim. I think it's going to be a decision. Uh, he's he's finished one fight. His first fight. His TKO. His first win ever against a Jason Tan. Uh, he beat Matt Brown. Split decision. He had no contest against Carl Parisian. Uh, he beat Matt T. Brown's T. J. Grant. A tough fighter. He is a tough fighter. Um, and then he beat uh, Amir Sadala, he beat Nate Diaz, he lost to Carlos Condit. You know, that's a good point. You bring up Amir, Amir Sadala. Damian Maya's striking is a lot like Amir, Amir Sadala's. Sadala. Very technical, but not real powerful, devastating. And he won a unanimous and That's kind of how it's probably going to go, probably. I was going to base my, my decision on this fight was based on the Amir Sadala fight. I feel like Amir Sadala, Damian Maya, I think Damian Maya's better on the ground, but I think they kind of are kind of like fighters, and they kind of have the same abilities, and he unanimous decisioned him. He lost to Carlos Condit. Um, There's Carlos no Condit shame in that, though. Champion. He's the interim champion. Exactly. I mean, and then you look at Damian Maya. His first three wins in the UFC were submissions against Ed Herdman, Jason McDonald, and unfortunately, Chael Sonnen. Um, so he had three submissions in a row. Since then, he's 4-4. Four and four. He's law- He won a, dis- a unanimous decision against Dan Miller. He lost a unanimous, Dan- uh, unanimous decision against Silva. Uh, he lost the. Uh, a unanim- he won a unanimous decision against Mario Miranda. He won a unanimous decision against Kendall Grove. A unanimous decision lost to Mark Munoz. A uh, win against uh, Santiago and a loss against Weidman. All unanimous decisions ever since. He hasn't had one finish since the first three fights. And that brings me like I said last time when guys come in and they focus on submissions and they can't they can't win a striking fight and they focus on finishing is a is a submissions. 
they tend not to fare so well. And then he's four and four since then. He's seven four in the UFC, and I think Dong Yum Kim's gonna he's gonna finish him. He's gonna finish him, and I think the second round, I think a hip toss, and then get him on the ground and, and pound the shit out of him, or it could just be a, a TKO standing. Just I think you're out. gonna need the TKO if that fight hits the mat. He's tapping. Think so? I agree. That's what he's I not, think. He's never he's never been submitted. Dong Yum Kim's never once been submitted. I'm taking, so, I mean, it's first time for everything. I'm taking Dung Young Kim. Patrick Cote, back from uh, quite the layoff, 17 and 7, 4 and 5 in the UFC, versus Kung Lee, 7 and 2, 0 and 1. Kung Lee's UFC. coming off the KO loss to Vanderlei. Anyway, so that's his only UFC fight. Uh, he is 7 and 2, though. Uh, all, all of his fights, all nine of his fights have either ended in a KO or a TKO. He's knocked out four guys. He's TKO'd three guys. Uh, and he's been TKO'd once and he's been KO'd once. He's got those crazy kicks. So he's, he's a Taekwondo he black belt. He's a big guy, too. He, he's a stronger guy. He kind of he kind of reminds me of that uh, of that fighter from the movie Bloodsport uh, with <laughs> Claude Van Damme way back in the day. Molo? Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. Molo Young? Yeah, Molo? the big, the big uh, fighter. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He kind of yeah, reminds me. doesn't even look me. like him at all. <laughs> I don't know. He, if you look at him, they kind of do look, they look similar. Uh, maybe the way they dress. I, <laughs> I, I saw a picture on uh, on Wikipedia of Kung Lee, and they kind of reminded me. Do of you it. think this fight hits the ground, Rob? Uh, uh, no. Only if Patrick Cote is going to take it there, because Kung Lee ain't going there. No. I think it's a stand-up battle. I do, too. I think Kung Lee is a very dynamic, exciting fighter, and I'm picking him to win, and I hope he wins. I'm not sure he'll win, but uh, I'd rather have him win because he's exciting to watch. Oh, my, my case for Cote kind of is like this. hippie on that one, you know. My, but I'm going to pick Kung Lee. My my argument is this: you know, he's Patrick Cote is four and seven in the UFC. Six of those losses, like we already said, Tom Lawler, Alan Belcher, and, uh, Anderson Silva. He's lost to Travis Luter, Chris Lieben, and Tito Ortiz back in 2004 when Tito was in his prime and beating everyone's ass. So you, you look at six of his seven losses are against top flight guys. I mean, maybe not top flight guys, but main eventer guys. guys not main event, but pay-per-view guys, guys that have been around. All main those guys. card guys. Main card guys. Alan Belcher just came off a really impressive win. Obviously, Anderson Silva, that name speaks for itself. Tom Lawler is a great fighter. He's not the best. Uh, Chris Lieben, you know. Filthy. He He's awesome. So Chris I mean, he's, Lieben's exciting to watch. And, and now and Patrick Cote, he's lo- he got cut for losing three fights during the UFC, but he's now lost. He's won his last four fights, two of them by unanimous decision, a KO and a TKO. Uh, I think he's back on his winning ways, and I, and I got Patrick Cote in this fight because I really like him. I thought he w- he was losing the fight. He lost the three, the, you know, the two and two and a half rounds, Anderson Silva, but he didn't look like he got beat up. He was making a decent fight of it, and I feel he like didn't if answer he can the just bell, get right? back. He, I think he came no, out. No, he third popped round. his knee, and it was a, it was over in the third round. I thought he came out in the third round, and then it was like, in the third round that it happened. Yeah. He, oh, he did answer the bell. Well, he yeah, he, he, he was he, out. He, he just didn't he come injured out it earlier in the fight, and he tried to gut it out. And, the, and he gutted out the rest of the second round. He came out in the third round in a minute or yeah, so. Just kind of like fell. He out. was like he just went down. He was trying to fight still. You could tell he was limping on it, and then he went down when he tried to move, and he was done. But I feel like he was he had a, he had a, he was had a good fight. One of the better, other than the Chael Sonnen fight, you look back at the fights that Anderson Silva's had, and really this was the only one I can think of that's been clo- even anywhere near a fight that didn't look devastating or, or he didn't dominate someone. Yeah, but he probably would have if they hadn't gotten stopped for that knee stuff. I mean, yeah, he was getting whooped. He, he, was, he was losing, but he was making it. He probably would have knocked him out. I think Kung Lee lives up to the hype. I think he finally comes I through, so. and you see an exciting match, and he he wins. He uses his kicks. He uses his. Uh, I tell you what, he ain't gonna be a crazy if he loses again. We He's also have uh, another trilogy. Yes, Forrest, Forrest Griffin, Griffin versus Tito Ortiz. Uh, Griffin's eighteen and seven, nine and five in the UFC. Ortiz is sixteen, ten and one. Uh, all but one of his fights have been in the UFC. Uh, the first one, Tito won by a split decision. Uh, second one, Forrest won by split decision. Uh, Tito Ortiz is getting um, inducted in the Hall of Fame the day before this fight, I heard. The day before. And before their last fight, he was just coming off back surgery. Uh, both being split decisions. Uh, they are both really close fights. I think Forrest is just a little too big for Tito to deal with. Uh, and I think he's evolved a little past Tito. He's a little younger to the sport. Forrest Tito was in, set in his ways, did his wrestling thing, and I think Forrest 
learned more things. And it's came been a while a since higher. Forrest just fought, though, right? He fought uh, in Brazil Shogun. versus Shogun. When was he that? Um, I'm not sure. Was that in 2011 or 2010? Big fight. Uh, 11, I believe. I think so. Early in 11. I think, I think Tito's been more active than Forrest because he fought Rashad and Bader last year, didn't he? He fought three times in 2011. Possibly. He, he, bought, right. no, he fought Nogueira, Evans, and Bader all in 2011. Right, so yeah, he's actually been more reactive than, than uh, Forrest. I personally feel like this is for both these two guys. Forrest Griffin, I don't know anyone else in the UFC that he can fight at this point and have a good fight against Stephen with the Bonner. way he's looked. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah, maybe Stefan Bonner for another like trilogy fight. Actually, but Tito Ortiz, yeah, it would be a trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, but then Tito Ortiz is the same thing. I feel like the only person he has a chance of beating is Forrest Griffin at this point. Because Forrest Griffin is so far down on the run right now, and as like I, I wouldn't said be earlier, surprised if Forrest since Griffin 2006, retires soon. Tito Ortiz is one six and one draw. The draw come against Rashad Evans. I mean, and he and most of those wins literally has been three of them were in 06. Yeah, uh, you know, or three last three wins were in 06. He beat Forrest Griffin, Ken Shamrock twice, but Ken Shamrock was it was a joke. Those two fights were a joke. Uh, he lost they to Chuck drew Liddell. some of the biggest money for the UFC they did, ever. But though. the fights themselves were a joke. They were big because it was it's Ken Shamrock. You know what I mean? He he has been in the UFC what They one, sold those fights really good, you know. I mean both yeah. guys were selling those fights. I mean, people wanted to see those two fight. Well, I think another close decision for Forrest. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be a close decision as well. And I don't think it's gonna be a great fight for either of them and it's just gonna be well, this is fight. Tito Ortiz's last fight before he retires, yeah. and I'd like to see him go out on a win. So just based on that, I'm picking Tito Ortiz. Um, I'm not absolutely positive he's going to beat Forrest Griffin by any means, but uh, I am picking him because I want him to win, and I like to see guys win on their last fight like Chris Lytle did versus you know the way Chuck Liddell and mm -hmm. Randy Couture went out. You know, I like to see guys win their last fight and retire than. Well, I, I do too. So that's why I'm picking him. him. Got to pull for him. Well, we wish you yeah, luck. Forrest Griffin's he's lost three of his last five fights. Once again, again you know, great. Forty-one percent. You probably don't want to go with my picks. <laughs> now the fight Forrest, we've all been waiting for, though. Or did you have something to say about Forrest? I was just say, if you look at Forrest Griffin, you look at his last losses. I mean, he got TKO'd by Rashad Evans. He got KO'd by Anderson Silva. A bad KO. Uh, he got TKO'd by Show. Think about how many years he, he ago that was. Ass whipped. I mean, he's like he hasn't had he has had three fights in that many years. I mean, it's been it's he doesn't it's, fight often at all. He's more of a training he's been partner. Getting his ass whipped. For, for what's he trained with Frank Mir, right? I mean, his I last mean, um, he's more of a training partner for Frank Mir than anything Griffin? else. Yeah, his last Trains two with wins. Couture. I thought he trained with Frank Mir. Extreme Couture. I could have swore Frank yeah. Mir said he trained with Forrest Griffin. I don't think so. When mm -hmm. I watched the last thing, though. Like, Frank Mir's base. Like the only people Frank Mir has his own gym, I think. Yeah, trains like with his kids. House and trains with his kids are there. And he said anybody can come and train there. But when I saw the show, there wasn't anybody else there but him and his training partners. But you look at, like I said, Forrest Griffin, his last wins are against Tito Ortiz and Franklin. And one was a split decision and one was the unanimous decision against You know, Franklin. they both wanted this fight, though. And I saw them both on Inside MMA, and they both said they wanted to fight. They won their next fight to, you know, because Forrest yeah. Griffin knows he can't beat anyone else. I, I, I like Forrest Griffin, but he's just... Well, we'll see. We shall see when you know, it comes up. Like I said, he's probably pretty close to retiring, too. I mean, not that he's that deep into it like Tito has been, but... If you actually you know, if you look back at Forrest Griffin's r uh, record, he first started fighting, I think, in like 99. But, His I mean, he hasn't like been in the fight. UFC nearly as long as Tito. No, I mean, well, he's but, been in since well, the first show. Fighter 1. Which was like in 2005, right? Two, five, two, so seven. That's seven years. No, are you sure? What, what the way so. Ultimate Fighter, what, 12, 13 now? Yeah, but they do more than one a year. Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah, I think uh, I think that uh, he so, might be almost done, too. He might retire soon, too. I'm going to see when that happens. Yeah, probably. But we got Anderson Silva and Chael Sonnen for the rematch, finally. Anderson Silva, 31-4, and 13-0 and 0 in the UFC. Which is uh, the record. Chael Sonnen, 27 and 11, 6 and 4 in the UFC. Uh, Chael, of course, won the first four rounds of the first fight. However, he tapped with a minute and 50 seconds left. Uh, he also failed the post fight drug test after that. Silva claims a cracked rib during that fight, told Big Nod he would submit him 30 days prior to that fight. Uh, exactly what did happen. Um, do you think that that's why he went to the ground? Um, or do you think the second fight is going to be a replay of the first one? 
I don't think he purposely let Chael Sonnen take him down, but I think that uh, you know if he d if he did really have a cracked rib or a broken rib going into the fight, it could have definitely played heavily on being taken down so easily because it's never looked like he's been taken down. So he's granted he's never really fought anybody quite as good of a wrestler as uh, Chael, except for maybe Dan Henderson. But even Chael's probably better than Dan Henderson. Well, he has. I mean, he's got great uh, takedown defense, but he has been known. To be honest, I mean, hell, Travis Luter had him in a mount. That's Travis Luter. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think Marquardt might have had him down for a minute. Um, Travis fucking Luter. Yeah. A you lot know? of people were saying that Anderson Silva looked really flat-footed compared to his other fights in that fight. Though. Yeah, he didn't come out bouncing uh, like crazy. He had the gi on instead of his uh, little thing. He wasn't I don't jumping think he around. Took, got took down on purpose and purposely, you know, let Chael send a whale. I just him never seen him drop got, like that until he got him triangle but I think he was definitely pushing for that triangle the whole fight you could see his legs every round trying to inch up Chael Sonnen's back and I even I remember watching and saying he's going for a triangle you know and he's going to go for a triangle and I you know I don't see how Chael could miss this it. fight was originally scheduled in Brazil do you think uh with it being in Vegas that gives Chael any advantage no. Littlefield no because no. Anderson's no? fought in Vegas enough times it's not you don't think it's be... closer to home for him than he'll have more fans? It'll be better for Chael because he's not getting booed as much? Well, better that he won't get, like, assaulted with, like, things thrown at him as he's walking out of the ring, but... No better than better that? Than no than difference in the I fight? I don't think so. I don't think, so. think, I don't think it's going to change the dynamic of the fight at all. I think it's going to be the same. Chael Simmons going to win. He's going to take him down again like he did the last time. and uh, he's gonna In the last he fight he lost? I know. Oh, okay. I don't know if you But he's going to take him down like he did in the last fight. It won't go. There's no way he's going to go down that. Nobody's ever taken him down that easy. On top of that, Chael Sonnen's never even taken anybody down that easy. He Did couldn't Brian get Stan? Bisping down that easy. He, he couldn't. Brian Stan. Okay, maybe Brian Stan. <laughs> he tossed Brian Stan to the ground like three maybe. or four but times. But not Bisping, not, not Mark Brian Hart. Stan. Yeah. No, no, nobody like that. Um... Um, I'm Rumors of a knee injury for Anderson Silva, however. Did you guys hear that? Oh, no, that's not that. good. Um, I heard it a couple weeks ago uh, where something had come up where he did have a knee injury. However, through Twitter, Anderson says, don't worry about it. I'm going to be there on July 7th to do my job. I so, still think there's a chance that this fight doesn't take it, doesn't happen. Why? Chael was Maybe granted use of TRT as well injury for this fight. Yeah, I, 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 I still have a feeling that Anderson Silva doesn't want this fight. Oh, come on. I do. Why is he, he pushing it off for so long? I don't think Anderson Silva's afraid of anybody. Why is he pushing it off so long? Except for fighting then? maybe John Jones right now. Why, why did he push it off so long? Why did he John turn down Jones. the fight so many times? He was injured. For that long? He had a shoulder but then, injury. But then he was training twice with. Yeah, I don't think. I, I mean. Don't, I don't think he's you're, afraid. You really you're, think he's you're, ducking him, huh? Well, I mean, if, you're, if your shoulder is injured where you can't fight a guy, do you really go train with Leo sure. Rashida? Why? Sure. Really? Train all if the time. He trains every day. He lives MMA, man. That's what he does. You, you just rest. don't train hard. You gotta rest. You don't go if if you if your shoulder is Always messed train. up that you can't fight, you let it heal. He's a champ. He is the champ. He is the fucking man. No, for much longer. Not till July seventh. He is the fucking. Okay, man. well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say my piece because I don't really have as much to say about this as you guys probably did. Um, I want Chael Sonnen to win, and I, I'd like to see him win because it would make the middleweight division more interesting because Anderson's been on top for so long, and I just want to see something different happen, and I think it would be great if Chael won because then it would set up a third fight, and Silva's not going to be around Third forever. fight will never happen. It could happen, but not if it, it happens three years from now. You know, I mean, but if, if Chael were to win... If Chael wins, a third fight will happen. Right. If Chael wins, and you could see another time. fight between them in 2013, and you could see a trilogy, and it'd be good for business for the UFC in all aspects. I'd like to see Chael win. Having said that, I do not think it's going to go the same way as the first fight. I think that Anderson Silva's going to knock Chael Sonnen out either in the first or second round. I think it's going to be pretty brutal as well. I'm going to go with TKO uh, because the ref has to pull him off. I'm going to go with TKO on the other side of the round because the referee's not going to be able to pull Chael Sonnen off him when he starts to beat him. You can get disqualified if you, can't, if you don't stop you punching him. Fine, cause <laughs> the referee's going to grab a hold of him. He's going to lay about three or four more punches. Just The only thing I can... I don't understand with the pick is if you saw a guy completely control somebody for four and a half rounds 
never be able to pass guard, hit him in the face 300 times and not cut him open. But how many times have we said that? Who the fuck? What are you doing anyway? How many times have we said Chael Sonnen how he ever tries to advance? Did you see Chael Sonnen's face he after that fight? Guard. Yeah, he, he took 36 look shots. Chael, look at Chael Sonnen's 36. face after every fight. He always looks beat up. He took 36 shots to 300. Almost every fight he comes out of, he's got, he looks beat up. Those 36 shots meant more than the 300. This time, it's going to be a little bit backwards. He's going to get more shots in than Chael Sonnen. Anderson like Silva too. by Brutal TKO. Don't listen to Dan Littlefield. I'm a champ. Now, I would like to point out, uh, this time. even though you guys got time. the same percentages, as far as main events go, you did prick Frank Mir. You did. Frank Mir. You almost guaranteed Frank Mir yeah, you with pick, a you crazy, nasty knockout and talked about how you're going to be gloating about it. And Frank we Mir about got obliterated. <laughs> so this time Pop after Anderson calls. wins, I'm going to expect a formal apology on the air. <laughs> but either way, you have the picks and the main pick, Anderson Silva over Chael Sonnen. And Chael it'll probably be Anderson one of the Silva. biggest pay-per-views the UFC's ever had. It's a good bill. You heard price. it right here from the champ, Anderson Silva. Where'd you get wins that? Wins the fight. I stole this uh, from Chael Sonnen. That would never happen. <laughs> Where'd you, where was his house? Yeah, it was on his uh, mantle over his fireplace. I walked in as a happen. gangster from St. Louis and <laughs> swiped it directly of off of him, smacked his wife in the ass, had her <laughs> make me a sandwich, and then I'm fucking headed down to Brazil to hand this fucker back to Anderson where it truly belongs. And that's real. Yeah. <laughs>